Welcome to Solutions with Courtney Anderson. I am your host, Courtney Anderson. Thank you for joining me and being part of the program today. We have a show that is part of the Myth Warriors series. And our Myth Warriors series is all about us, you and I, getting out there in life and being assertive making things happen and we are not someone who is passively waiting no we are on attack we are attacking our goals so that we can of course meet and surpass them and we are attacking ideas out there to sort of determine is this idea going to be helpful to me is this going to be part of me meeting and surpassing and sustaining uh, surpassing my goals or is this idea an obstacle is this idea something that is literally blocking my path and preventing me from meeting and surpassing and sustaining uh, surpassing my goals and that's what we're doing in myth warriors we're trying to look and see concepts and ideas are they helpful or are they harmful are they true that would be helpful potentially or are they a myth are they a lie are they a fallacy a fabrication a falsehood uh, so specifically our show topic today is if it was easy everyone would do it if it was easy everyone would do it and this is a really interesting show and when we were looking over the show notes and looking up uh trying to determine the the recording schedule i thought wow i didn't do this show already (laughs) i would have thought this would have been the first uh myth warrior series shows we would have done but i hadn't and so one of the reasons why i was shocked is because it's something i repeat so much if we've ever met in a corporate education or training program if a keynote if you've been a a client of my law firm or my uh, consulting practice or a student even um how many times do I use this? <laughs> this this point, right? If it was easy, everybody would do it. And and um, I use it sometimes to motivate people. Like, come on. Hey, if it was easy, everyone would do it. And sometimes I use it as, um, as a way to sort of refocus somebody who's explaining to me why something wasn't done or, or making um, sort of a, a list of excuses of why something can't be done. It may not be able <laughs> to be accomplished, but the issue is if it was simple, if it was something where you just sort of, you know, woke up and, and, you know, did almost nothing and then boom, there you go. Business, you know, degree, you know, successful marriage, healthy kids, then we would all have this, right? <laughs> um, you know, it wouldn't be anything that anybody would ever talk about or be stressed out about. It, it would all just sort of be there. So I never really understand when someone says to me, oh, it's so hard. You know, management is so hard. Leadership is so hard. It's so hard to be an entrepreneur and start a business. It's so hard to be an educator. It's hard dealing with students and administration. It's hard being a lawyer. You know, it's hard to become a lawyer. All the, you know, at a minimum, seven years at a minimum, you need an undergrad and a, and a law degree in the U.S. So at a minimum, you're at least seven years of education. Um, and then you have to go through a, a very... Um, challenging licensing process and um, bar examination process so people will say wow you know it's so hard or you know it's so hard to you know I wanted to be a you know an entrepreneur and build an internet business or I wanted to have a podcast like you do and I tried and it was so hard well yeah again look yeah uh as always you know when we have the shows and I'm and we're we're rolling out some new um ways to sort of formalize some of what we do with this program because it's it's something I enjoy and I love and it's 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 going very well um so we're adding uh new um uh, processes and things to sort of improve it but I want to encourage you of course to come to CourtneyAnderson.com and uh, take part in our community suggest a show give me your feedback um, let us know what's going on in your mind well one of the things that um, is interesting to me is it's it's it relates sort of to you know very simplified macroeconomics right supply and demand the things that people usually say to me oh it's so hard oh it's so hard um are things that are desirable that they want right 
you know, so they want to be wealthy. They want to have, you know, whatever credentials they feel would, would help them um, feel uh, that they have prestige and pride in themselves and, and, cha and challenge in their professional opportunities. Um, they want, you know, um, rewarding and supportive and exciting. That's really something that's important that I, that I need to mention. People want exciting relationships. So not just that they, they want, you know, their children to be successful and healthy and their spouse to, to be caring. But beyond that, they also want excitement. So they want these things and then they sort of lament, oh, it's so hard. But like I said, supply and demand. If everybody to earn a million dollars had to simply wake up and, um, you know, push a button on their, on their smartphone and a million dollars would be wired to their bank account, then everyone would have it. <laughs> you know, I mean, not everyone. There's always going to be a bar that e I don't care how simple it is to do something there's always going to be some you know population of people who just aren't going to even do that and you'll ask them and be like you wouldn't even push the button nah, i don't want to push the button so let's be fair because we are being you know myth warriors not everyone would have it so that part of that part of the assertion that every literally every single person on the planet all you know seven billion plus if we interpret everyone to literally mean every single being that's alive then that wouldn't be plausible because people are constantly being born um people are passing away and then you have some people who might have um special needs or um developmental or um physical uh, conditions that would prevent them from taking advantage of opportunities so if you say everyone and literally mean every sentient human then that's not going to happen because there are going to be legitimate reasons why some people aren't able to you know, they're, they're two minutes old, um, or there's some other uh, condition. If you mean everyone and you sort of mean like, yeah, everyone who could, then I think that this is, this is not a myth. It's not a myth. If it was easy, then yes, everyone would do it. Everyone who could, let's put that in parentheses. So, because again, supply and demand, if there was just unlimited supply, there'd be very little demand, right? If every, so we just talked about, oh, it was, you know, um, and I use professions and uh, certain jobs often because there's some jobs that if you go and you look and see, you know, what is the government of this country tell me those people earn? Or what are the odds of me being unemployed or unable to find a job with these, you know, skills? There's certain skills in many parts of the world um, the income you're going to earn will be higher. So you'll earn more money as a medical doctor in most parts of the world than you will if you are a retail clerk, just sort of an entry-level retail clerk at a store. Um, that's not because retail clerks and, and medical doctors are somehow medical doctors are better or worth more. It's just that there are fewer medical doctors and there are retail clerks. Now, I've worked as a retail clerk at a large shopping mall. Uh, it was a long time ago when I was... Uh, uh, and working my way through through college through undergrad but I did it and it wasn't the the requirements to do that job now there were many requirements right like they had certain requirements for your appearance your, your hygiene right so you had to you know be clean and look neat um you had to of course have a way transportation to get to their the mall to the store um you had to have the ability to to do you know some some things of um, you know, to speak a language, to be able to talk to customers, you need to be able to use their uh, machinery to go ahead and customer paid for something and check the customer out. So you need to have some basic understanding of uh, how to use the machinery, how to use the language, um, some really basic understanding of math. And I mean, really basic, but, but you did need it because you had to understand um, people still today pay with cash well definitely back when I worked in retail people paid with cash and you the machine would tell you how much cash to give someone but you needed to be able you know if the machine told you, you need to give them seven dollars and you know 31 cents you needed to be able to recognize what the seven dollars and 31 cents look like it wasn't one of those machines where it counted it out and just spit it out for you you had to open up a drawer and then in there reach in and grab you know seven dollars and 31 cents so there were skills, and there are skills that would, uh, and they also had other skill uh, requirements. I'm sure they had, I'm sure, um, some level of uh, background check. So if somebody was, um, you know, wanted for uh, a, a criminal violation at that moment, if that's a felony or something, they might not have been hired. If someone, um, you know, was 
uh, failed a drug and alcohol test. So they would give a test where the person would go to a, a local laboratory, the applicant for the job, and you would submit a urine sample. And then they would look and see if you had, in, in whatever the labs test, uh, whether or not you were um, under the influence of substances that they felt would, you know, uh, prohibit you from working for them. So it wasn't like you just woke up in the morning, everybody who wants to go to, the, to a shopping uh, location and become a retail clerk is automatically hired. That's not true at all. And in fact, you know, those jobs, when people need a job, it's hard for people to get jobs and say, ah, oh, you know, I really tried and they didn't hire me. Well, it might be that those the shops or different stores have different, like I said, hygiene and what they feel, you know, their brand or image. Um, I know when I worked at a store, it was a large department store, so they, they, the managers would talk to us. They wanted us to dress nicely, right? They, they sold very nice clothes. The, the problem was, of course, they didn't, in my world at that time, they didn't pay enough money for me to be able to afford to buy the clothes that I, you know, was selling, working there. But I tried to do, you know, but I wore clean, neat, pressed, you know, what I had. Uh, and looked as you know as presentable as I could, although I couldn't afford some of the nicest, you know, nicer things that they sold at that department store. Um, but my argument is there are more people who are capable of being a retail clerk, those skill sets, than there are of being um, a licensed, you know, physician, medical doctor. A, it takes a lot more uh, education, uh, training, um, you know, internships and residencies. Again, licensing, you know, this stuff. It takes longer to sort of get to the point that you're qualified to go out and be a physician than it does to get to the point where you're qualified to be a retail clerk. Um, and the challenge is that every single time that you, it's it's just like our Myth Warriors show title, you know, our series. You know, I said earlier, or is something an obstacle in my way stopping me from, you know, meeting, surpassing, and sustaining, surpassing my goals? Or is something an asset that's going to help me get there and surpass my goals? Everything that you can do to make yourself and your skills um, more desirable is helping you. And it's, and it's simple to understand supply and demand. If there are very few people who are medical physicians, and there's a lot of jobs for those people, because almost everywhere that we can think of, I was thinking, well, maybe the space station, uh, international, but yeah, they need, you know, you need, everywhere you have humans, you're going to need some sort of medical physician, because the humans may become ill, or the humans may be injured. So you're, there's a need. It's not like you don't need this in certain parts of the of the world or in certain climates. I mean, you're all you could have, you have humans, and you have potentially illness and injury. Um, you're going to need medical personnel. And so because of that, because it's something that there's a huge need for, right? Like everywhere I have humans, I'm going to need somebody to do this. Now, do I need to have a shopping mall everywhere? Some people would argue it would be great. Uh, just the people who you know are in the business of building uh, shopping mall centers but it's not necessary I can I can totally live my whole life and never go to a shopping center you know and there's societies that have certainly historically all of us that's what we did before we built uh, sort of centralized shopping centers we had markets maybe have open-air markets but we could make it as, as a species and we did without shopping malls and we made it without medical physicians right that's a relatively new advent now we always had in many cultures people who um were, were healers or who were trying to how much what we would call modern science was was utilized is is something that certainly we could agree it's 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 different now but so there's an argument not necessarily proven right but we have more medical physicians and we have them practicing things that are based more on what we would call you know scientific evidence um, and we have longer life expectancy and we have um, things that once just uh, decimated populations, diseases and uh, things that we have um, vaccinations and all kinds of things to, to make our, our, our longevity and our quality of life better. So my argument is simply that if you have more of something, then it has less value. Not that it inherently has less value as an entity, but just just on the in the market. There's, I don't need, I don't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to trade as many resources for it because there's so much of it. It's abundant. And there's an overabundance of it, right? And so that's the same thing with our skills. And so whenever people say to me, oh, oh, it's so hard. Again, if it was easy, like everyone who could would already have been doing this. So anything that you talk to me about, and I'm talking, of course, a lot here professionally, but in our real life, people, oh, people say to me, oh, I was, you know, because I have, and I've openly talked about this. I have, um, at this moment, I have two pets, uh, two pet dogs that I love. And 
and talk to people and they say, oh my gosh, you know, oh, I wanted a pet, but there's so much work. And it's true. This is a, this might seem like a silly example, but it's not necessarily. Anything takes work. If you want to do it at a certain very high level or have a, a high level of success, um, if it was easy, everyone would do it. Now you would say, well, what's up to do with supply and demand? Well, having a pet is one thing. Having a pet that is... Um, following uh, what we would call sort of well-behaved, which is not a, exactly the right language for an animal, but the idea that they're pets and then they're pets who destroy everything, right? That's one of the things people say, hey, I'd like a pet, but I don't want the pet destroying my house. I don't want the pet, uh, you know, tearing up my stuff. I don't want the pet using the restroom everywhere inside of my place. Okay, having a pet and having your stuff destroyed, they're not necessarily go hand in hand. Having a pet that doesn't destroy your stuff, it doesn't use the restroom all over your house that requires work that's the part where it's not easy and not not in my mind none of the things that are that are that are, that are the work part are negative so to me if you if something if, if if something required a certain amount of education or certification or time I would say great because I think well why that's awesome because at the end of it you'll have this wonderful outcome right people who have children you know, um, say, oh, it's so hard, you know, kids are hard. Well, uh, yeah, wow. I'll multiply whatever somebody was thinking about a pet by a huge factor. It's very difficult. But it's a wonderful reward when someone takes their parenting seriously and puts so much of this hard work into having, um, I hate to use these terms again, but I think they're a shortcut to explaining what I'm trying to say. Well-behaved, um self-disciplined healthy children making good choices that takes a ton of work and certainly not everyone is 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 willing to do that uh, i've shared in programs i've done um work as a lawyer but in my law firm as part of my business and also in my law firm as a volunteer services with children who are in the foster care system or who the government um, has removed from their their family of origin or, or caregivers due to you know abuse and neglect and things like that. And I so I've seen a lot, and I've been doing this, you know, since the probably 1998. So it's it's been a while that I've seen this. I've done it in different parts of the of the of the U.S. and I've seen a lot of consistency with people who just don't put that hard work in, you know, to 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 parenting, um, and it's not easy, and that you know they suffer, but certainly their children suffer. And so my argument is that there's there's going to be a smaller population of, you know, um, children who have all of that support and all of the role modeling and all of the discipline and all of the nurturing that they need to become the, the most healthy, most well-rounded, um, healthy, successful, potentially um, adult human beings there's a lot of work that goes into that and it requires somebody who has a massive amount of time and patience and and very highly developed skills to understand what you need to do to to nurture guide and lead um, I argue many times that what we use as leadership in a family is very similar to what you use as a leadership in a business you know just like I said it's it's the rare Unfortunately, it's not the majority of, of children that have grown up and are, are in these wonderfully uh, well-structured, again, where there's this, 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 this wellspring of, of support and self-confidence and patience. Because to do that, to create that environment, you need, ideally, you usually ideally have at least two uh, adults um, who both have all of these, their needs met themselves, right? So they themselves have a wellspring of self-esteem, self-discipline, patience, nurturing, uh, you know, so you, you need to have that. And then they create this other very uh, safe and consistent environment, which takes money and it takes time. Um, and then you, and then they can create for the children that sort of ideal environment, right? Where the children have attention because some people have money and resources, but they don't put any time into their children. So the children are neglected and emotionally distant and you have not good outcomes. So you have to have this sort of combination of all of this. And it's rare, unfortunately, that's not the majority of children anywhere in the world. Um, well, in some parts of the world, it's more, it's more of a majority, depending on how the society structures itself, but my argument, though, is it is hard work. It is. 
And it's the same thing as I was saying when you go and take that to your work environment. How many places do you go where the managers and the leaders have that, again, that same wellspring of nurturing and, and support and unwavering um, attention and uh, focus and development of self-esteem? How many places do you go like that? There are very few. And again, it's because the only way that that system would, would even begin to be possible would be if the managers and leaders themselves, you know, woke up in their own world every, you know, work day and were like, oh, I feel so good about myself. Woo! My life is better than I expected. I'm living the dream. I can't wait, you know, to get to my work and communicate with people that I work with and help nurture them so they can live the dream. And I feel so good about myself. And, you know, I, I have so much self-esteem and, and positive, you know, feelings of, of joy to share I mean that's what you need it's the same thing with the family right because if you have somebody who has unmet needs right and they're insecure they're angry they're disappointed they have regret you know they're bored then they're not going to be able to go and create this sort of ideally um, nurturing successful in space for their for their team members at work and it's and so that's why you have so few of these sort of elite optimal organizations if it was easy everyone would do it it's not easy because it requires individual work on yourself, which we have lots of programs that we, we do talking about different aspects of this, right? You have to meet these needs you have. You know, do you feel your life is, is more than you expected it would be? You know, which is a great place to be in life where you look around and think, wow, I never expected it would be this awesome. <laughs> um, and yes, that's real. And there are many people who live like that. Um, or are you someone who's like looks around and thinks, oh, you know, I never, I never thought it would be this awful. This is my worst nightmare. You know, I could have been somebody. I could have been a contender. And look at this. Look at this horrible life I have. I'm so angry and resentful. And and and, and if you're from that space, then forget about it. You're not going to be able to meet anybody else's needs because you haven't met your own. It's it's not easy. If it was, then we wouldn't have this situation where people are in such distress. So let's let's break it down. I did include in our show notes. Went to our definition. Uh, we love our dictionaries, and I just put down definitions uh, for easy. So it says uh, easy definition, not hard to do, not difficult, free from pain, trouble, or worry. Ooh, doesn't that sound good? Free from pain, trouble, or worry. Not hurry. Not hurried. Mm -mm. Not hurried. So here you have the definition. And to me, that's the place where you are aspiring to be after you surpass your goals. So in other words, if you're looking at something at the beginning, you're thinking, okay, I I'm, I'm, don't have any skills. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm 15 years old. And you look and you think, okay, well, to become a medical physician, it's going to take me a lot more time than it would to go out and, um, you know, be someone who uh, helps clean up uh, buildings with sweeping and things of that nature. But if you look at it backwards, in other words, if you make the choice to do the thing that maybe takes more time or maybe, quote, is harder, after you finished it and you look and you look at your life, it, it should be the goal. This is why we talk so much about the choi- the joyful art of business. After you've met and surpassed your goals, you should be able to look around and it, your life should be easier. That was the whole point of doing this. It's not like you should go become the, the medical physician and then you look around your life and your life is a horrible nightmare. And you think to yourself, this is the worst thing I ever did. I shouldn't have spent all those years and all that time and all that stress. And now I hate my job. I hate the people. I hate everything. Um, maybe I make a little bit of money, but it's not enough. I'm, I, this is never what I wanted. I really just wanted to work with, you know, with, with fish. I love fishing and I should have just done that. That's what I'm trying to avoid because what to me that's such a, a negative outcome. There's somebody who should be uh, in a place of some level of joy, feeling like, oh, life is pretty good, right? But instead they're miserable and then you look at all the effort and time and energy they put into it and you think, well, why on earth would you have done this to yourself when you didn't even want this to begin with? And you get a whole bunch of reasons. People say, well, that's what my family wanted. I just thought, you know, I thought it was safer, things of this nature, right? But they're miserable. And that's ridiculous. And I think it's also a bit disrespectful because they have opportunities to not be miserable. But then everybody has those opportunities. What to do with them is something else. 
But ideally, you should be picking things that you really want to do. We talk about this in a lot of other programs. Then you do them, and then at a certain point, you create a life of financial independence, of uh, emotional well-being, of, of challenging and interesting work, of the ability to say no to stuff that you don't want to do, right? And you should be able to look around at some point and feel like, ah, oh, life is, you know, free from some troubles. It's free from some worries. And not having financial worries, not having worries of uh, job loss, not having worries of what am I going to do in the future and stagnation and, and boredom, that takes a lot of pressure off of people. And it also opens up opportunities uh, for somebody to also then pursue what's the best medical advice, what's the best uh, quality of life they could have to treat themselves, to try to also ward off other problems. So, you know, it becomes really difficult when you have somebody who has all those opportunities and then they still tell you how miserable they are. It's not that they're not miserable, they are. But the question is, well, what can we do to prevent that? And that's what we, we do in so many of our programs. But my argument is, I am I am in many instances aiming to get to a place of easier. Not that my whole life is, is boring and I don't do anything. You see many people who do seem joyful in what they've done. And they don't just sit around and do nothing because that would be boring. But their life is easier. They're not stressed about money. They're not stressed about their job. They're not stressed about a boss. They're not stressed about, you know, a layoff. They're not stressed about... Um, these types of things because they have resources that sort of buffer and protect them from if it, something goes wrong, right? So it's all about being strategic so that when we get to the point where we've surpassed our goals and we're, we're sustaining that, that we're, we're, that we feel good, we're happy. Our life is better in terms of the, the stress level, in terms of the, the un uncertainty, in terms of the lack of opportunity. When you look at the idea if it was easy, everyone would do it. My argument to you has been very consistently, this is absolutely, this is not a myth. This is accurate. So if you catch yourself saying, oh, I would, you know, apply for that promotion, or I would, you know, go back to school, or I would, you know, go out and try to meet someone for a relationship, but it's so hard. You know, I hear every, you know, every, you you know everything from oh it's hard. job interviewing is hard applying for a job is hard dating is hard everything is yes it's all hard if it was easy for people to get up in their personal life and have the you know satisfying exciting you know fulfilling relationship with their dreams everybody would have it first there'd be you know no divorces or breakups um there'd be no moaning and complaining about it and there'd be whole uh, industries that would be out of business right everything from uh, divorce lawyers to you know, self-help books on, you know, why they, they didn't stay or why she left or why he left or what can you do. And it's not easy. It takes some work. And a lot of the work is with you. What do you want? What do you want in a family? What do you want in a spouse? What do you want in a job? And, you know, there's nothing more frustrating for pe than people who say, oh, it's so hard. And then I ask them, okay, what do you want? And I get this. Well, I don't know. Okay, well, here's that's why it's so hard. If you don't know, who who else will know? And if you, I don't even believe they don't know. And I've done other programs about why. You know. But I think people don't want to say it. I think people think, oh, other people will judge me or it's not what other people are doing. And I think all these things are silly and have nothing. They're just, they're, they're obstacles to our ability to meet and surpass our goals. Look, if you can go ahead and, and own your own ideas, this is what you want. And then you have to be able to communicate that in some way. If you don't do this, you're never going to be happy at all even fleetingly because you're you're stuck in stuff you don't want to do and, and it doesn't fit your interests and personality and your inclinations so why do it at all now you may have to do things temporarily if you're a young person or you're changing life and, and you know you did one job for 30 years and that went out of business and, and you're like i need to transition to something else okay i might need to have a period where i'm going to go out and, and sacrifice my my total interest so that I can earn the, the skills and the knowledge and the information to move forward. But it's not easy. It takes time. You have to start with who are, who are you and what do you want? And you must be able to define it. If you can't define it, forget about looking for a job because you don't even know what you want. You don't have to know, I want to be a painter and I want to paint, you know, commercial you know, murals and be that specific. But you do need to have some idea. How do you want to work? Do you like to work with a whole bunch of people in a physical space? Do you like to work remotely um, by yourself? You know, what, you know, you need to have an idea because otherwise you're just sort of a running out in the world looking for somebody else to tell you what it is that will make you happy when the reality is you secretly do know what it is that would make you happy. You just don't want to take responsibility for it. 
if it was easy, everyone would do it. And then, as I was saying earlier, you'd have a totally different world in a lot of ways because the supply and demand would be different, right? We are all about being assertive. We call ourselves, you know, warriors in this series. To get out there and get to a point where we do feel like our life is better than we ever thought it would be. That we're living the dream, right? That takes work. Now, a lot of it, most of it is free. Because it starts with us. You know, what do I want? And then, of course, it's going to take some time and effort. Because, again, if it was simple and something that took, like, you know, two seconds and no effort, then, then most every, most of the people who could would have already gone and done it because it only takes two seconds. I have to tell this anecdote. So, in the United States, as you know, um, or maybe you don't know, there are many, many, many lawyers. In fact, there are more lawyers per capita in the United States than there are anywhere else. So, in the United States... Because I think of the culture, people are very quick to believe in the rule of law and they're very quick to take advantage of the legal system for a couple of reasons. One, there are a lot of lawyers. So it's not like in some parts of the world, people want to take advantage of the legal system, but they know if I go to the legal system, it's going to take like nine years. Um, and it, there are just so few lawyers and so few judges and everything's got this huge backlog. And, you know, what would be the point? In the United States, there are so many lawyers. There's There are courts. There are backlogs in the U.S. Don't, don't misunderstand me, but they're not... They're not so much of an obstacle that people feel like I'm not going to go to court at all. Many people really honestly do think the first thing I'm going to do is sue you. Some people say that's a horrible thing, that we should have more people working things out on their own. I'm not disagreeing with you on that. But I, but but my argument often, and we talk about this in the Law Lovers Lounge series and other series, is that people believe in, in many instances in rule of law. So they, people don't typically think the first thing I'm going to do is go outside the system and just do things on my own, be like a vigilante. People often think I'm going to go within the system, right? And we have all kinds of small claims courts and all kinds of court justice courts and all kinds of courts trying to continue to encourage people to do that because even though there's a there's a downside to so much um reliance on courts the upside to that is you're trying to take people away from sort of just taking justice into their own hands right so somebody's mad that their you know neighbor had a tree that was dropping leaves in their yard and instead of having that person just go over there and start you know to their neighbor's property with an axe and start cutting that tree down and start a huge fight with their neighbor you know they're gonna go and try to you know ask the courts to tell the neighbor to cut the tree down and that may sound silly in some places but it what we're, it, what we're trying to do i think is is in some ways there are benefits to the rule of law all right so that tabled for this for a moment there's a perception out there um and it's not something that just sort of magically came up but there's some couple of stories in in the u.s that uh that people had gone uh to uh, fast food restaurants and specifically one a woman had gone to a fast food restaurant and she'd spilled hot coffee on herself and then she was so silly, you know, and greedy, and she went and she sued the restaurant and um, won millions of dollars, right? And so, like I said, this narrative is not out there accidentally. I mean, there's there, there are parties and interested parties in getting the narrative out there, and there's reasons which we're not going to go into in this show. But it's interesting because I've talked about this in some corporate education programs, and I've talked about it certainly um, in, in my, some of my classes as a professor who, teaching, you know, graduate business students. So I always say to people, look, if it was accurate that all you had to do to get millions of dollars, okay, and remember, in the United States, the average individual income is somewhere around like twenty two, twenty three thousand dollars $23,000 a year, U.S. So a million dollars, millions of dollars for the average person who's making like twenty two, twenty three thousand dollars $23,000 would be an insanely incredible amount of money, right? Okay. So... I said, if it's if it's true, let's just let's just be logical and think about this. If it's true that all I need to do to get millions of dollars is go to a fast food, uh, you know, drive through win- window where you we don't even get out of your vehicle, right? You just drive through a little window and you're talking to a little um, intercom. You tell them what you want and you drive to the next part of the window and they give you your food. You didn't even have to leave your seat, right? So convenient. If it's true that all I have to do to become a millionaire in the United States is to go to the closest fast food restaurant and order hot liquids, so coffee or tea or something like that, and then say, oh, I spilled it on myself, and then I'll get millions of dollars. I asked the question of, you know, of, of the audience, 
of the of the uh, corporate um, employees, you know, or the attendees or students. Sometimes I'll say, well, then what idiot wouldn't go do that? No, I, I mean, think it, think it through. If you truly believe that all you need to do to become a millionaire, right? Forget, forget going to college and school or become a plumber or real estate agent and going to class and getting certified and all this. Forget all of this. All you have to do right now is find some sort of vehicle or bicycle or something and just go to the fast food restaurant. And let me say this, in the United States, if you've not been to the U.S., there are a lot of drive through convenience fast food restaurants. And I mean, I am not kidding. There are a lot. Now, I've been to some parts of the U.S. where there aren't any around for a little while. Usually those are very uh, sparsely populated areas. But I've not been anywhere where there are no fast food restaurants. I mean, there might be some where there's only one in a, you know, a 50-mile radius, but there are some somewhere, okay? And I'm including, I'm including really sparsely populated areas, okay? So there are fast food restaurants. There's a good representation of them. If you truly believe that it was easy to become a millionaire, to simply go to the local fast food restaurant, go around, grab some hot tea or hot coffee or whatever, and then pour it on yourself and then say, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm in trouble. I poured hot coffee on myself. Give me my millions of dollars. If it was that easy and you believed it was true, if you believed that that was a true narrative, that was that simple, it's all you had to do, why on earth, what idiot wouldn't go do that? It wouldn't make any logical sense if I believed it was true. And I say this in a culture, again, the United States, where people... And there's a lot of studies on this. People believe you can play lottery, which is, you know, it's a gambling. Now, I'm not a person who plays the lottery. So, but many, many people are in the United States. And in many parts of the country, it's the, you know, the government, of course, has to approve it. And the government in many parts is the entity that's, that's sort of um, providing the lottery. So people go to their local convenience store and um, they buy lotto tickets and then they sit and wait to see what numbers are there come up and see if they're going to be a millionaire or you know whatever and people do that because they believe it's true they believe oh i could i spend whatever a dollar on this one u.s dollar and i could make you know 10 million dollars so they believe it's true and they do it and when you look at studies of who buys lotto tickets it tends to be people who are lower income which is which is in some ways makes sense and in other ways you would think well that's weird why would somebody with less money go out and spend it on something that the, the probability of them getting any money is, is is incredibly low, right? You would think if you don't have a lot of money, I would take each dollar that I had extra and spend it on something that would give me a high probability, you know, getting an extra skill or certification or something that would help increase my income, that I could, that would have a much better outcome, right? But if you believe that an easy quote unquote way to become rich is to buy the lotto ticket, then you'll do it. If you think that that's a waste of your money and that you're not necessarily interested in lotto tickets, then you won't do it. So it sort of makes sense that somebody who has less resources will be more likely to buy lotto tickets than somebody who isn't. All this brings me to my point. If it was easy, everyone would do it. I'm arguing that that's accurate. It is true. If it was easy, everyone who could would absolutely do it. So if you thought that all people had to do to get millions of dollars was go to a hot uh, to a restaurant and, and get a hot coffee or hot tea and spill it on themselves and they could become a millionaire, everyone would be doing that. Like every restaurant would be just crowded with people in there, you know, spending their dollar to buy a hot drink so they could spill it on themselves and get millions of dollars. They'd be doing that much more than they'd buy a lotto ticket because it seems like it's easier, right? Because in the lotto ticket, you buy a lotto ticket, you may get the money if your numbers come up. If this true, if it was true that all you had to do to go to the restaurant to get the millions of dollars was to just order something that was hot for like a dollar and then spill it on yourself and you'd be guaranteed millions of dollars. Guaranteed millions of dollars and everyone would be at every restaurant doing this all day and all night. No one would work or do anything else because it would be stupid. If all I had to do to go out and get millions of dollars is get the, get the hot drink for you know a couple of cents or a dollar or spill it on myself, guaranteed money. I'm not waiting on a lotto ticket. I'm actually guaranteed millions of dollars. Everyone would do this. The reason everyone doesn't do it is because either A, they don't believe it's true or it's not true. And that is an example of, of what I'm saying. Think through this thing, these things logically. If it was easy, then they everyone would be doing that thing. So if everyone's not doing that thing, you might argue, well, they just don't know, all right? But you know, so why aren't you doing it, right? As we move to the end of the show, I want to again uh, note that having you here means everything to me. So thank you. 
Um, I, I do hope that you go out forward in life and you and you think about things and you think, ah, if it's as easy as they say it is, then everyone would do it. And and I was alluding to a little bit there at the end, the idea where con artists come in and take advantage of people, right? And and there's so many variations of these cons where, you know, somebody comes, oh, invest with me. You know, this is a once in a lifetime deal, blah, 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 this. Again, if it was that easy, everyone would be doing it. Um, if it sounds too good to be true, it, it is. That's a whole separate show, but it ties in very closely with this. I do want to, again, thank you and encourage you to come to CourtneyAnderson.com. Uh, and I do want to mention uh, we now have sponsors for all of our uh, episodes. We have to because we are um, really excited about how successful this show is. And um, so if you look in the show notes, you'll see uh, links from our, our show sponsor. In this show, we were talking about, hey, is it easy? Uh, our show sponsor um, is actually... Uh, ties into the idea people come to me and say I want to have a podcast I want to have a website I want to have an internet business I don't know how and so I actually have the show sponsor that I select and make sure every one of these is a show sponsor that is to the best of my knowledge I have personal experience with and that is is as as much as I can provide an anecdotal uh, experiences to the credibility or validity of their services or products but um, I myself am not a technical person it's not my expertise or my degrees uh, so when I looked at building uh, little websites to try to test out and see if I could come up with website businesses, um, there's a lot of services out there that have free um, or, or very low cost serv- uh, websites. And so the one that I'm recommending, that's our show sponsor for the show today, is Weebly, W-E-E-B-L-Y, Weebly. Um, and so come to the show notes. There's a link you can look and see, but they have a free service with some limitations on either how many pages or how much content uh, you can utilize, but you could start with that. Uh, and since it's free, try, you know, it doesn't hurt you. And it's one of those services where you don't have to understand the language of the uh, websites, the, 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 the language that's being used to build the website. They, they just have it set up where you can just sort of put the words where you want the words on a page and put a picture where you want a picture. Uh, and it's called what you see is what you get. Uh, and I use that because I'm not a, a technical person and the, the limited uh, coding and language skills I have are very limited. Um, so that's our show sponsor, uh, Weebly. Uh, it is much easier than, than learning the, a language from, from scratch or learning coding um, from some people. But since it's free uh, and it's something I personally have used, then it's down there as our show sponsor. So check that out. Again, I want to thank you for joining me uh, in in, uh, parting. Remember, hey, hey, if it seems like it's easy, then you need to say to yourself, why isn't everybody doing it? I thank you and appreciate your time today.